Welcome everyone and happy new year. This is 2022, or should I say star date, 2022. I'm here with Steve Lehman, president of CAS. I'll let you guys figure out what that stands for since we've been talking every single month about the night skies. So Steve is gonna share with us today what we will see for the month of January. Take it away, Steve. Hey everybody, happy new year. This is Steve Lehman from the Charlottesville Astronomical Society and we're gonna talk about the, uh, the night sky and some of the cool things that, that are happening in astronomy in the month of January. So I'm gonna share my screen here and uh, we will be off and running. There we go. So the first thing happening in January actually kicked off on Christmas day. Um, the James Webb Space Telescope launched on December 12th of 2021. It's the follow-up to the Hubble Space Telescope, which has uh, uh, been up in Earth orbit for uh, nearly 30 years, uh, if not more than 30 years, and um, it's uh, beginning to show its age. But the other cool thing about the James Webb Space Telescope is that it's an infrared instrument with uh, more resolution than the Hubble and it collects light in wavelengths that are, are uh, longer than what we can see with the human eye. Those wavelengths are generally related to temperature, heat, if you wanna think about that. So the, the James Webb is gonna be able to look back at the earliest galaxy formation. Uh, it's gonna be able to characterize using spectroscopy, uh, the atmospheres of exoplanets, and to give us a look at, at our solar system in a little bit of a a new way. Um, NASA has done just an amazing job of setting up information uh, for the public for the James Webb Space Telescope. And I have a link here uh, in the show notes listed as Webb's launch. And uh, this particular um, link will take you to uh, NASA's website, which has got uh, information uh, about uh, need to know deployment events and where is web. The coolest of the pages is the where is web. It shows you at, at the, on this particular page that, that I've got um, exactly where web is in space, how far it is from earth, um, what the temperature is, where it is in its, uh, its unfolding process, etc. If you're not familiar with the web telescope, it was uh, designed back in the 90s. Uh, building it was a uh, a little bit of an issue because they had to design much of the technology at the same time that they were actually building the, uh, the telescope. Instead of regular mirrors, it uses uh, 18 segmented mirrors made of beryllium and um, that reflects uh, that infrared light. Uh, for that reason, it has to be in a very cold place. And so it's uh, about a million and a half miles on the opposite side of the earth from the sun. And it's a spot we call the Lagrange point. It's a spot where gravity and orbital forces uh, equalize so that it can basically station keep or hover so that it does not have to have uh, or constantly use propellant. So uh, it's just gonna allow the, the telescope to, to stay at that spot for many years and hopefully do a lot of great science. Um, there is a page on the web um, web page that uh, tells the story. And each one of these links that you can see here in blue is a hot link uh, on the web page. There's just an amazing amount of, of information out here uh, for this telescope and program. So I hope you'll take a, a couple of minutes to to chase, uh, chase down some of this information. Um, we are uh, keeping our fingers crossed that uh, the uh, unfolding of the telescope as it heads to its uh, final spot at that Lagrange point uh, will continue to, to, to uh, happen, everything on schedule. Um, right now, everything is unfolding as it, as it needs to. Um, because the, uh, the telescope was folded up in an Ariane rocket, um, it's about the size of a tennis court when it will uh, be completely deployed. And so it, on its way out to its final um, 
observation point, it's got to unfold, set up its sunscreen, pop out its mirrors. Uh, and that's going to take about 30 days to get there. And then another couple of months for them to fine tune the, uh, the positioning of the mirrors and uh, all the other uh, uh, kind of electronics things that they need to check. They also need to make sure that it cools down slowly um, so that uh, there won't be any uh, electronic noise um, from any kind of heat associated with the telescope itself. So again, very, very cool uh, piece of technology heading out to its, uh, geez, uh, we gotta stop. Uh, somebody is just rung the doorbell and Okay, the next thing we want to talk about is uh, one of the Starlink launches that actually happened yesterday as we record, Thursday, January 6th. Um, the Starlink launches are um, an Elon Musk um, SpaceX program that is, uh, as you may know, uh, positioning uh, eventually more than a thousand satellites in the orbit of the Earth to make uh, internet available to pretty much the entire planet. So the cool thing about these launches is the day after a launch, there's very often what we call a train or trail of the uh, individual um, satellites as they deploy. Um, they basically pop out of the, the nose cone and then spread themselves out. And it takes a couple of days to, to get themselves spread out. So. It's very dramatic to see this passing overhead in the evening. Um, it is supposed to happen approximately 6.45 this evening as we record, uh, maybe a little bit later tomorrow evening. Um, there's a website called Heavens Above that you can go to to find out more information about uh, the passing of these Starlink satellites. So I hope you'll do that. It, it is kind of a, a cool thing to watch. Uh, on the downside, amateur and even professional astronomers are uh, a little disappointed about the fact that these particular uh, constellation of satellites gets in the way of um, imaging the night sky. Um, so it's a it's kind of a cool thing to look at, but uh, a not so cool thing to have to deal with if you are a uh, an astrophotographer trying to to take some images. Talking about the night sky in, in January, there is a real cool event on the evening of January 11th, about 545, uh, just after sundown. Uh, you're going to be able to see the planet Mercury about 15 degrees above the horizon um, in the west. Um, if, if you uh, take a look in that direction, you're going to see the planet Jupiter more easily. Um, it's going to be a bright star-like object, kind of cream colored. And then if you take a, an, an angle down to about five o'clock, uh, pair of binoculars, uh, you'll be able to see the planet Mercury. Um, Mercury doesn't really rise any higher than this as we and it orbit around the sun. So this is going to be the, the best possible day um, for the, the near future to be able to see um, the planet Mercury naked eye. So uh, hopefully you'll be able to get out there and hopefully the sky will be clear. January 19th is the Gamma Ursae meteor shower. And, uh, you know, the moon's going to be pretty bright that, that evening. Um, but if you can get out um, later in the evening, generally midnight or after, the radiant point or the point from which the, uh, the meteors will seem to, uh, to come from is uh, Ursa Minor, which is we know as the, uh, the Little Dipper or the, the little bear. Um, in Charlottesville, it's very difficult to see the entire thing out in, uh, in the Nelson County area. Uh, I, I always have a, an easy time of picking out the, the Little Dipper. But uh, again, midnight or after, uh, you should see uh, a few to, to maybe as many as a, as a dozen uh, meteor uh, radiating from that particular spot in the sky. January's moon phases, uh, we've already passed the new moon, it was the second. The first quarter is the ninth. The uh, full wolf moon is the 17th. 
Uh, not a really good night to do much observing of the night sky. Uh, it's called the wolf moon because uh, folks in, uh, through history have felt that, that wolves howl a little bit more in the middle of winter when the moon is bright against the, the very often what is a, a snowy background. So again, on the 17th, the full wolf moon. Finally, the, uh, the last quarter moon on the 25th. And I've put a link here in the show notes for a really great moon app. Uh, it's an interactive moon atlas, and it allows you to click on, on various quadrants of the moon and uh, then bring up uh, satellite images, uh, close-ups of uh, various spots on the moon. So if you've never seen um, the moon other than through binoculars or a small telescope, this gives you some really great uh, images uh, taken from everything from NASA, uh, Apollo satellites or uh, Apollo missions to uh, uh, NASA uh, moon orbiting satellites. So again, that's uh, Interactive Moon Atlas. Visit themoon.com. And that is the, uh, the night sky for the month of January. Uh, not a really exciting night or month, other than the fact that we've got that uh, unfolding of the, the Webb Space Telescope. So I hope you'll continue to follow that. Um, it's going to be continuing uh, roughly for the next two or three weeks until it, it gets at its station keeping point, and then another couple of months for uh, characterization of, of the mirrors and the electronics before they begin to haul in a lot of that cool science. So, Kathy, thanks a lot, and uh, hopefully uh, uh, everybody stays healthy, and we'll see you in the month of February. That was awesome, and um, I'll be sure to put the link uh, underneath the video um, when I post this, um, and I'll get this out so people will know to look into the night sky um, for the train. The trains are coming. Yeah, so. tonight for sure, and, and I think it's going to be clear tonight. It's right now at my house, it's very just very few high clouds so should be clear okay. and uh let's see tomorrow I, as i said tomorrow night should be a little bit later um i'm going to get that link for you right now for heavens above and i'll just send it to you in an email so all you have to do is cut and paste it okay thanks again for sharing your astronomical tidbits with us see you guys okay. next month all right